Procreate launched my career as a professional illustrator, but isn't it just an incredibly basic drawing app? Well, it's packed with powerful features that are easy to miss, and it's these hidden features that make Procreate the most popular app for professionals and have been absolute game changers for thousands of my art students. So let me show you the 10 most essential features that artists of all levels need to know to make it easier to create even better art and drastically speed up your creative process. Here's how you can add a secret private photo that will not show up in your time lapses. If you go to the wrench icon, the add tab, and instead of tapping on insert a photo, swipe and tap insert a private photo. Then you can add your reference image. And if you open the layers panel, you'll see that it is labeled as private. This will not show up in your time lapses. Ever draw something on the wrong layer? Let's say that I wanna move this pink pumpkin behind the cat over here, but it's on the same layer. So if I move it, everything moves. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select the pumpkin, then I'll swipe three fingers down and it's gonna pull up the cut, copy and paste menu. If I choose cut and paste, it's going to cut the pumpkin from the current layer that it's on and pull it onto its own new layer here. I can pop that below the cat layer there and now I can move my pumpkin wherever I like. Having these really dark selection bars makes it really easy to tell what I have selected on screen, but sometimes it can be distracting. So if you go to the wrench icon, the preference tab, there's a selection mask visibility and I can turn up or down how intense that selection mask is. If you struggle to draw smooth or straight curved lines, there's a couple of brush settings that will help you out. Tap on the brush you want to use and navigate to the stabilization tab. And here you're going to see three options, streamline, stabilization, and motion filtering. You can test the effects out by drawing in the tablet over here, and then you can crank these up and down to see the different effects. But what is the difference between these? Which one should you use? Well, unlike streamline, both stabilization and motion filtering will help you draw smoother straight lines as well as curves. Stabilization is gonna take into account how fast you draw to decide how much it's going to smooth out a line. Whereas motion filtering doesn't take into account how fast you draw, it smooths it out regardless. So which one should you choose? Stabilization or motion filtering? Well, we all draw differently. So some of us are really quick and decisive and some of us are very slow and methodical. So the best thing to do is give it a shot. So it can take some trial and error to figure out what works best for your drawing style. Now it would be a huge pain in the butt to have to go through all of your brushes to apply these settings. Luckily, you can apply it to all of your brushes in one go with a single setting. Tap on the wrench icon, navigate to the preference tab and go to pressure and smoothing. And here you can apply this to all of your brushes in one go. I just wanna focus on drawing the sardines in this image without everything else distracting me. By tapping and holding the checkbox on that layer, it's going to hide all of the other layers and just solo what is on that layer. When I'm done making my adjustments, I can just tap and hold on that same checkbox and it'll bring back all of my other layers. I don't like the design that I drew on this pillow, so I wanna erase everything on that layer. The fastest way to do that is to take three fingers and wiggle them back and forth in a Z-shaped motion, and that will clear everything on that layer and I can start fresh. One of the most critical parts of a great illustration is choosing good colors, and it's essential that the colors you choose contrast with the other colors around them. For example, if this pink was a darker color, this ribbon would totally disappear and the illustration would not be nearly as effective. Now, you can choose a new color in the color picker, grab the circle up here, drag and drop it onto your item and it will fill the color in. But it can be time consuming to constantly need to reopen the color palette and redrag that color over. Instead, if you use the recolor tool, you can keep the color picker open and instantly tweak the colors without having to drag that color circle over again and again. Now the recolor tool is a little bit hidden, so it's gonna take a moment to find it. You're gonna to go to the wrench icon, the preference tab, and tap into gesture controls. From here, look for the tab called quick menu, and I recommend toggling on 
this top option, the tap square, to turn on this gesture. Now, if I tap this square between my slider controls, it's gonna pop up the quick menu. From here, I can tap and hold on one of these, and I'm going to scroll through and look for the recolor tool. It's in alphabetical order. Now, recolor is assigned here, and if I tap recolor, a little crosshair will appear, appear on screen. And if I drag that crosshair around, it's going to fill the area that it's over with colors. Now I can change colors and instantly see the results. If I wanna switch the colors that I'm painting with without having to come into the color panel, I can use the eyedropper tool. I simply tap and hold my finger on the screen. The circle will pop up and it will sample the color that I want to paint with. Now it can be a little bit tricky though to grab exactly the color that you want. And if you're switching between this dark green and this yellow, an easier way to do this is if you tap and hold the circle icon up here, it will switch between the last two colors that you just used. So this can be an even faster way to switch back and forth. While working on this textured edge right here, I may find myself needing to erase, but if I use an eraser that doesn't have the same texture, it can look kind of weird. I could hop into the eraser tool and search through all of my brushes to find the brush that I had used while I was drawing that textured edge. Instead, I can use the same tap and hold feature on the brush, smudge, and eraser tool. So if I tap and hold on the eraser, it's going to assign it the last brush that I just used. So now I can erase with a textured brush. Now, while it's true that one of the best parts of working digitally is the ability to undo and redo, so for example, I've drawn these lines right here, and if I tap two fingers on screen, it will undo what I've done, and if I tap three, it'll redo it. However, don't be tricked into thinking that any mistake that you make can be undone in Procreate. There are some massive mistakes that can cause irreversible damage to your art in Procreate, like lose all of your artwork mistakes. So watch this video next to make sure you avoid the seven worst mistakes that Procreate artists make.